My name is Marina Kander, born and raised in Lone River First Nations. Then I moved to uh, Whitefish First Nation, and that's where I raised my children, my four, uh, four children. I have three boys and one girl, and I lost one, so I have five altogether. Okay, these beads are for beadwork on anything like the, like the jacket I did, all the different colors. I have to go to the store and look out for all those different color beads that was on the logo. Yeah, these are the beads that you use. It usually comes in size 10s and 11s. These ones, and there's a lot of different colors. And these are the same kind, but they come in small packages. Different colors again, shiny beads. I don't use these as much, but I do like the young children like the, the glossy ones. So I tend to use glossy ones on little little kids' uh, moccasins. And this is for sewing, a thimble, that I cannot do any sewing without that. And a sharp scissors for the hide. And when you're doing, um, sometimes you reach the end of the a thread, so you have, this is a really um, come in handy. You just cut the, the thread off and tie it. And my needles, there's all kinds of needles here for leather. I don't know if I should show you. This is a beading needle, it's real thin. There's two kinds. I use this kind for uh, when I'm doing uh, beadwork on cloth. This comes in handy because it, it, these ones bend easy. So I use them on, I don't use them as, as often as I do on cloth. I only use it on cloth, I mean, uh, and I have shorter ones like these ones. This one's harder to, uh, to bead. So what I use is this one, little short one, and it's uh, you can buy these at the uh, helper tights, and it, they call them uh, beading needles, and it has a gold eye. They're really easy to thread, and and uh, they're short, and they're real good for uh, tacking down, not like the long one. And this is the. Glover's needle. It's kind of a. Can you see the tip of it? It's kind of a. It's real sharp, and it can go through the. If I can use this. That's the kind you use on the leather when you put that. When you put it together. You fold it like this, and then you just push it with the. It's hard, but, and when you put the moccasins together, you have to stay at the edge. This one is called a uh, uh, sinew. And when I use this, I usually cut it that much. Cut it off. And then this splits into you don't use this on beads. This is what you use. This is called beading thread, and it's real thin, and it's nylon thread. So this one splits into five, I believe. Some don't split as easy as this one. I like using this one. Long time ago, people used to take the backstrap from a moose, that long piece. And when they take all that meat off, they dry that moss, the, what you call this? The cord, <laughs> I guess, and dry it, soften it, and make strips of this thing. And when you split this, 
I'll come into fives. Then what I do is I I go like this so it's a little stronger. It doesn't free as easy. You just And then what, what did I do with my needle? Then you put it onto this uh, Glover's needle. This takes a lot of patience because not everything's easy. Cut the, in an angle. Might go in easily. Then you double it. Sinew on Glover's needle, that's what you use to do all this. It's stronger. I'm doing the, that side too. So move this up. And this is my little sharpener. So all these little tools are very handy, the scissors for the height, cutting the height, as I said before, the sharpener. And this is for when you're doing these strings, I use this. I think this is called an owl. <laughs> Not owl, owl. <laughs> and then you make the little holes. and put that little string there so they can tie it. Yeah. And these, the hide is for moccasins mostly and jackets and vests. I also make vests. So this summer I'm hoping to make hides. <laughs> I used to make hides, but not as much. Way too busy. <laughs> it's dying, dying. Uh, not too many people know how to make hide, so I'm here, anybody wants to learn. Maybe I won't be able to do the heavy work, but I'm willing to teach. I, we even made a booklet, me and my sister. What do you need, how you, how you stretch it and all that, and all the tools, different tools you need. I was raised by my kokum and my auntie, and they never, they didn't, well, when I was small, they, I didn't, really do anything like this. But my grandma used to make hides, from what I can remember, with my auntie, even in winter. Now people are lazy to make them in summer. That's the easiest time to make them. Not, my grandma used to make fire at the foot of the, the rack and at the, at the head over there so that hide wouldn't freeze. Yeah. And um, then I got, went to my uncle's for some reason, uh, and they hand me down from one family to family. <laughs> but that was okay. I learned, I learned a lot from my kokum. They were hard workers. My kokum and my auntie, they always do something, and that's how I am. Not to brag or anything, but I can't sit still. I have to keep going, doing this and that. And um, yeah, this is what I love to do. I love to pass on what I know. That's why I'm, I'm 76 and not slowing down. <laughs> I, keep, I keep going to schools and whoever asks me to go and help, I go and help out as much as I can. I started beetlework when I was 14. <laughs>